Yes, the real media. KJAG Radio and KMA Entertainment, your source for entertainment news and interviews in Central and South Central Kansas. The best of the best are here, and we go above and beyond to bring you the most bang for your buck. Find us on the social sites like Facebook and Twitter. Log on to kjagradio.com and jiggyjaguar.com for more. Thank you. Good night. Back here on Jiggy Jag TV, also out here at The Well in McPherson, Kansas. Daryl London is playing a night at the McPherson Opera House, and I'm going to go ahead and let her introduce herself and talk a little bit about why she's here. Go ahead and jump in there. Hi, I'm Daryl London, and yeah, I'm here to perform tonight at the McPherson Opera House. Well, uh, talk to me a little bit about how you got started doing music. Okay, um, I started writing and singing uh, when I was probably 13 years old. I've been playing piano since I was five, and um, I wrote and performed all through high school, and then I went to university for media studies and kind of took a break from music. And since I graduated, I've just been all about music, pursuing this as a career, and seeing where it takes me. That's cool. Now, uh, you're known for your, and I want to make sure I get this right, Witty observations of everyday situations. Okay. Uh, how, how, how did explain that to me? Because that's like on all your publicity information and everything all over the day, all over the name of life. Right. Um, I like to kind of have fun with songwriting and and make it playful. Um, and I find that relationships, even the kind of the weird or bad parts of them, when you reflect on them, they like, can be kind of funny. Um, so I like to just sort of see the humor in things and reflect, reflect that in my music. Now uh, talk to me about My Piano. It was released, what, 2007? Oh, <laughs> I haven't been asked about that, like, ever. <laughs> um, yeah, that was my first EP. Um, it, was, it was just piano and voice. It was more like a demo. But yeah, I, I released that independently um, when I first moved to Toronto to pursue music. And then, since then, I put out two full-length albums. That's cool. Now, uh, how, how do uh, the two full-length albums compare with each other? Um, the first one, Edible Word Parade, is my first full-length album, fully produced, and it's very, um, it's kind of quirky and, and, and very playful, and I think a little bit sort of younger sounding. And then, Eat a Peach, it's still playful and kind of whimsical, um, but I think it's just a little bit more grown up, and I, I just think the songwriting is a bit more involved. That's cool. So now, uh, talk to me about the uh, songwriting process for all those. For everything that you do, what 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 do you do when you sit down to Let's put a song together? I pretty much just sit down and put a song no. together. <laughs> no, I sit down at the piano. Um, sometimes some people write lyrics first or melody or chords. I kind of just write it all together as it comes out, sort of. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty, usually a pretty organic process for me. I'm trying to be a little bit more disciplined about it and treat it more as a craft, but um, I find my stronger songs come out when I'm just feeling really emotional about something and I just sit down at the piano and something comes out. That's cool. Now, uh, you play all over the place. What, what have been some of the more interesting places you've gone on the tour? And um, I've been really lucky that I've been able to tour North America. Um, I've played in New York and LA and Boston and Toronto. I play a lot of, from Canada. Um, but I spent a lot of time in the Midwest and I really like it. Um, I find that people are generally receptive to arts and culture and really supportive and it's really nice, which, <laughs> which I, I appreciate. Um, so yeah, I play a lot of, of performing arts centers and uh, a lot of colleges also, which I enjoy. That's cool. Now in uh, 2010, I understand you were up for an award or nominated for, uh, what was it, the, you, you performed with the Lilith Fair in Toronto? Is that yeah, so, so Lilith Fair kind of took a 10 year hiatus and then they brought it back in 2010 and they had a contest. Um, for local and emerging artists to perform at, at most of the stops, I think. Um, so for Toronto, I was chosen to be an artist, which That's is cool. really awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Now, in, uh, you were chosen as a needle in the haystack artist by our stage. Well, 
what exactly is that? Um, well, our stage, it's kind of a cool website where artists put up their music and then it gets, um, it's kind of like a, a charting system, but for independent artists. And so yeah, they, they just do, did this thing with mtvmusic.com, I believe, where they would highlight one of their artists and kind of feature them for the month, I believe. So That's cool. that was chosen for one of those features. That's cool. So uh, where were you when you heard about that? Oh gosh. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> now, in 2010, uh, you got a Best Pop uh, Award from an um, Independent Music Award. For yeah, Best the Pop. Toronto Independent Music yeah. Awards. That was really cool. It's kind of like Toronto's Toronto's version of an award show. And it's yeah. just really fun, and it's really um, cool that they recognize you know local artists who are getting some traction at that stage. Um, so yeah, that was really awesome. That's cool. Now, uh, how do you do with your social networking? What, what, are you using Facebook and Twitter and all these things? Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, uh, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and some other sites that I don't really, you know, manage that well. But um, yeah. I try to focus on those three and and also my newsletter. That's a big one for me. I have a monthly That's newsletter. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, I really love to interact with my fans. It doesn't feel like work or a chore that like, oh, I need to post something on Facebook today. It's just kind of <laughs> sharing little pieces of my life with people who support me, and then I like to hear, you know, things about their lives too. So That's it's just cool. a really great way to stay in touch. Now, uh, you were featured um, in a list of extraordinary women by the Huffington Post. Mm -hmm. That is a pretty cool honor. It was really cool. It was um, written by a woman named Shannon Skinner who has uh, a TV show, and so she interviewed me. Uh, her TV show is called Extraordinary Women, and I was yeah. one of the women she interviewed, and then she compiled this list and this article. So that, yeah, that was a huge surprise and a huge honor for sure. That's cool. Well, uh, what are some of the other places you're going to be performing? I know you're doing the gig here in McPherson tonight. Yeah. Um, what What other places could be cool? Um, I have a couple. Uh, colleges on this little mini tour um, and a lot of driving. I'm playing at um, the Northeast Technical College in Green Bay, cool. Wisconsin, um, and then uh, University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. Wow. So, um, yeah, so it should be fun. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you doing this. Thank you, Thank so you much. Thank you so much. And uh, how do we find you on the internet? What, what's what's the best? DarylLondon.com is my website, and then Facebook.com slash DarylLondon and Twitter.com slash DarylLondon. That's cool that you got the, you don't have to do like Daryl London underscore or any of that. You've got your name. Keep it simple. That's but my really name cool. is spelled weird, so that like makes it hard for people. Yeah. So I try to keep it as simple <laughs> as I possibly can. Well, thanks for watching. KJAGRadio.com.